Hello everyone, we're going to try a little different content today. I'm going to go over one of the decks I got top 16 at the PBG Dallas event by a guy named Will. I don't know how to say last name very well, so I'm not going to insult him by trying to say the last name. I didn't really watch the coverage of the event, but uh, I still want to go over this deck and uh, try to do a little analysis and have some comments. Hopefully we can all learn something, and I hope it will be a fun experience. Uh, to start things off, they have uh, one main deck after image technique, sparking negate. It's not a hard negate, but still it's useful to have one, especially when you end up getting tapped out for some reason. But I can understand going down to one. A lot of players are going down on their after image. It's starting to get worse and worse with a lot of the decks in the format. We have one, is that all you've got? Decent hard negate right there. Uh, even sometimes you don't even get the opportunity to do the discard anymore unless you're against certain matchups. Uh, we have four of Weiss. So this is one of the actual red pitches this deck has because you can pitch a red or a yellow. It also has some life manipulation abilities, which is relevant. Uh, that being said, you want to be careful with your life manipulation when you're a Beerus deck. All your card draw is on your front side. So really, you don't want to switch over to your back side until you're actually ready to start popping off. So you want to avoid taking that last bit of damage to do your awake until you're actually ready to awaken. So that's pretty relevant. Because you should only really be using that manipulation when your opponent's keeping you at 5 and you're ready to finally go to 4. 3 Denial of Hope is pretty standard in most red decks. 4 can be a little too many and 2 is normally too few. Uh, 4 Super Combos. 4 Weiss. This is our main uh, red-yellow energy right here. Uh, 3 copies of the 3-drop Beerus that in this deck is basically 1-drop crit. So pretty good pressure with that card. Two Digging Deep Vegetas. Once again, very good uh, life manipulation. It can be a super aggressive card in a lot of matchups. You can really make your opponent discard, discard a lot of cards per turn to not take the hit when they're a very reactive deck. Uh, but the same, same story. You got to be careful with your life manipulation, which is why this set two in this deck. It's also worth mentioning this deck doesn't have any uh, familial bonds. So this is coming out for three. It's not coming out for two. But a uh, smart move only going to two on it. Uh, three fearless pans. Uh, a lot of people might think they want four. Remember, you're hard casting this. You're not playing it for two with familial bonds. And if you're hard casting this, are you playing it on turn three? You're probably not playing it on turn three. This is probably a turn four, turn five, turn six push card in this deck. Because most of the cards in this deck are crit or single strike. There's not a lot of double strike. So you wouldn't want four. Because you, you'll just be looking at your hand like, oh, they don't do anything. Yes, you can pitch them, but it's better to have right ratios. Next, we have three Super Saiyan 3 Gokus. You can only have one out at a time. It interacts with the Whis, it interacts with the uh, After Image, and it interacts with the Exploit Weakness Vegeta. That being said, playing it during your opponent's turn doesn't do that much in this deck. It's not Bulma, but that's still relevant. So you don't want four because you can only have one out at a time. It's warp abilities, interesting. In theory, really, you're pitching all the extras. But I could see why you don't want four of them. Four topos, one of the best negates in the game, and it gives you board presence, so of course, that's F4. Four of the five drop arrival Beerus. Uh, so, you can either charge one occasionally on your first turn. This might also be your one of discard for Beerus, because keep in mind, even though. His backside lets you do a red-yellow multicolor once per turn. That means you only ever need one red-yellow in your drop. So, really, you're going to want to rival these mostly. You might put one in your drop for its effect. But most turns, don't put them in your drop. Put one of your expendable red or yellow cards into your drop. That's how you'd be playing this deck. And then next we have the two exploit weakness Vegeta, that's fair at two. Three can be a little clunky, especially when you're not against stacks that it punishes. One SCR uh, Baby Geneba. So this deck could run either Baby Geneba or the Frieza. 
because really you're mostly playing red threats in this deck, and most of the energy you're charging is going to be red. That being said, the Frieza has a lot of downsides. It's punished by most counterplays, and you have to be at 2 life to use it effectively, which in a lot of decks, when you tap that 5, if it doesn't go off, you lose. While this Geneba, you can tap that 5, and one of the few things that interacts with it is going to be Champa. None of the other counterplays are really going to do anything to it. Even Cold Blood Lust and Frost Deadly Poison aren't going to do much to this. You're still going to get the ability. Yes, it's going to come to play tapped with Frost Deadly Poison, but that's fine. It already did its job. While Frieza, you lose everything when they do anything. <laughs> Even Cold Blood Lust, a 40k vanilla, <laughs> isn't what, what you're looking for at that point. In 2 life verse, you could play this at 5 life, 4 life. So I could see why they picked the Geneb over the Frieza SCR. And next we have 3 Krillin, so this is our yellow side of our life manipulation. Because since it is 2 colors, it's good to have that. It's also early game pressure with crits. So you're either playing beers or you're playing the Krillins each turn to crit people. And at 3 is good. You're, you're really not going to be playing them in the late game, you're just going to be discarding them. And even in the early game, in certain matchups, you're not going to play it. Just because you can't take the life. Because, like I said, one of the weaknesses to the Beerus is being aggroed out too quickly and not getting to draw cards. If it stays on the back side or on the front side, too, th there's no such thing as staying on the front side too long. It's The problem is the back side. If you go to the back side too early, you'll start losing cards very quickly. Uh, three copies of the Great Ape Son Goku. So, this is one way that that can draw, and it's also an easy yellow pitch with the Beerus. At three is good. Realistically, you're not going to be playing too many more than that, and it's an energy sink. It, mana sinks are a good thing, especially when you want to hold up three to four energy for negates, maybe two energy for negates and pass. This lets you do something with the rest of that energy. Next, we have four Chompas. So, a lot of the times I've been going down to three counterplays like these, because if you have too many in your hand and you're just draw, go, draw, go with your opponent, you're going to start getting behind. But in this deck, you can discard your extra Chompas. So it's fine to have it four, because there's going to be those games where it's like, I don't have the Chompa when you're at three. So I can understand why this deck specifically is at four, because it doesn't have that problem of too many Chompas. Like other decks, since it could just get rid of the extras. That being said, it does give info. If you're discarding a Champa, your opponent should see that as a sign you have another Champa in hand. And the final card of the deck is going to be a Fu the Dark Banisher. So, good top end, good against all the negates, triple attack, so applies pressure. And of course, against Hot Chuck. You want something like this. I know I probably said that name completely wrong. And now let's go into our sideboard. We have the one extra. Is that all you've got? So once again, we talked about this aggro. You don't want to go to your backside too early. Getting a second one of these in the deck against aggro is pretty helpful. You can clear their boards. So that's probably why that's there. And hard negates, of course, is relevant in certain matchups. Then we've got the final guardian. Personally, I put this in a lot because you never know where you're going to see a Kaioken. It's just a decent negate. If they discard it, doesn't matter. You can get it back. Even in certain matchups where you're getting milled a little bit, it's basically like you didn't even lose a card when it goes to your drop because you could just use it from your drop. Uh, the fourth denial of hope against those certain matches where you really want it. The third uh, exploiting weakness. And of course, like great apes, U6 matchups like that. Two of these, Vegeta striving to be the best against your barrier cards. The only issue I could say with this card is most people who are playing cards with barrier are playing things like the swap package, and they're not putting their cards in rest mode very much. Other examples like the four drop uh, piccolos, they're not swinging with those really that much. So this is going to have a hard time popping a lot of key barrier targets. Um, you could think about using the um, three cost uh, baby Vegeta, the more you can discard to pop a rest mode, or discard to tap it first, 
and then pop it so you'd be getting rid of two cards. Uh, the issue with that is number one, it costs three. Number two, it's double yellow, which this deck is going to have trouble with. And number two, you don't get to untap energy with this, like the two drop. So it has its trade offs. I'd really have to see a lot more matchups and a lot more cards of barrier that's actually being tapped before I can decide if this is the better card to have in the deck. But I can definitely see why they would pick it. And then we have three of this making an entrance. I would definitely need more comments on this, but I assume it's because this deck draws so much and it can get into games where it's in it's in danger of getting milled out. You would essentially just respond to their negate with this Vegeta, which number one gives you an extra body, messes up their negate math. And number two allows you to recycle your card so that you're not going to get decked out. Two of Taos. Even if you don't expect to see any discard decks in the format, just know there's going to be decks that have red with Topo. And it's a great punishment for other Topo players. So if you got room in your side deck, two Taos is fair. I can understand why that's there, even if you're not afraid of any discard decks. Next, we have three copies of TN. So, even if you're not afraid of Genev anymore, there are two new Android leaders. They're both blue. They're both very annoying decks, and TN is very useful against them, not only to prevent their untapping, but since he's a one drop against them, he gets around the summon sickness for you. You play him, then you play your regular threat for the turn. And finally, a second Food the Dark Banisher. Uh, great for uh, uh, the Hachag matchup once again against any deck that's using a lot of negates. Just more pressure. We've seen this deck goes a little bit wider than other decks. It's mostly single strikers, and the fact that you're just getting those three extra swings in can be the push you need for a game. So very solid deck. I like the ratios. Very good thought go went into the reserves, and I have to applaud it. A lot of players don't put enough thought into there ratios and I could see this person definitely thought about it only having three the Beerus because of the turns you're gonna play it how many you want to see three of the Gokus uh, three of the pans two of the digging deeps very solid ratios that other people might not think about right away they might just think it's a good card but for I want to see it and not think when they're gonna play it what turn it's relevant how often it's going to be relevant, all those things matters. And even with the Beerus ability to discard the cards that aren't relevant at the time, it's still good to have a tight deck. So I applaud this person, Will, whatever your last name is, I'm not going to say it wrong, for having a very, very tight deck. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was fun. I don't know if you guys heard that dog barking. <laughs> I'm in an apartment and was barking for a second. So you guys can say hi to the doggo next time. <laughs> <laughs> have fun everyone enjoy playing and let me know how this was if it was good content bad content agree disagree maybe have more insight on some of the cards in the deck things you would change things you super support things i said wrong i'm welcome to any criticisms bye